Hey everyone, so today I'm going to be talking about a pre-1990 film that was um, my category for today and I kind of cheated a little bit. It's right on the cusp of being pre-1990. It's a 1988 film and it is Richard Linklater's first full-length feature film called It's Impossible to Learn to Plow by Reading Books. As I said, it's his first film. It costs, I think, $3,000 to make, and it is by far his most stripped-down effort, obviously, if it's a first attempt. This is a film pretty much about an aimless wanderer, um, somebody who never really seems to have direction or really never seems to have a plan, and the film is pretty much executed in that manner. It's a pretty aimless and wandering film. Um, it's vast, it's sprawling, it covers a lot of ground, but ultimately it goes nowhere, which I think is kind of the point. You can definitely see how this leads up to most of his later films. There are actually some kind of um, similar motifs, like the train, which you see later in, of course, uh, Before Sunrise. And this falls in line very much um, in paralleling Slacker, which would be his next big film. To be honest, I think this is probably um, nowhere near my favorite Link Ladder film. I can give it total credit for being his first, uh, his first venture into full length, but there were certain parts of it that were just too aimless. Um, and maybe that's because I don't really like to necessarily delve into those aspects because I experienced it a lot in my own life but here unlike Slacker it was just a bit bit too much um, I found that unlike Slacker the dialogue was actually the weakest part Slacker the kind of rambling nature of all of the characters that's its strength it, it brings to light so many eccentricities and interesting qualities of a town and of the people in that town. But I think that in um, this film, the dialogue halts it a bit. As I said, the train aspects of this film, I think, are probably the most interesting. It's the most traveling kind of wanderlust feeling that you get. I think that's probably where he achieves the most beautiful aspects of this movie. Um, one shot in particular is towards the beginning, and it's just this kind of very blue-hued shot um, of rain hitting a window, and I think it's, I, personally, it was one of the prettiest shots I've ever seen him film, and it only lasted a few seconds, but it resonated with me for some reason. But ultimately, I think it's a pretty commendable but pretty average um, film from Linklater, who would, of course, go on to do things like Days and Confused and Before Sunrise, Before Sunset, Waking Life, Tape, everything like that. I can guarantee you if you're a fan of Slacker, you'll find some elements in this that you'll appreciate. Uh, but if you're not into kind of very, very little dialogue, very little camera movement, and um, just kind of a vast, oblique uh, narrative, then you probably won't enjoy it as much as most people do. That is one of my favorite directors, and I was really excited to finally get to see this film. It's not an easy one to find. The only way, to my knowledge, that you can see this film at this point is um, if you buy the Criterion version of Slacker. It's on the second disc of this beautiful version of Slacker, and it also includes um, his first short film which takes place during a music festival. So all in all I would have to say that um, his first film uh, along with Slacker they both kind of provide an interesting slice of life and very realistic look at just kind of that aimless not knowing where you're going in life feeling. If you're a fan of Linklater you should definitely check this out. Um, it's short but it can seem long if you are not completely committed to uh, wandering around for an hour and a half or so. So that was my quick little summation. Um, I hope you enjoyed it and I will be picking up another film review for next week. Bye!